Welcome everyone to the American Center of the United States uh, Embassy uh, for this uh, celebration uh, of the uh, Prague Agenda. Uh, as you know, President Obama has been here twice uh, in April uh, of uh, April of 2009, April 5th in fact, when he laid out his vision of a future without nuclear weapons and how we can get there. Uh, and again, uh, in April uh, 2010, uh, when I had the privilege of uh, tagging along with him. Uh, we're very pleased today to um, have uh, as our uh, uh, featured uh, commentator and uh, our special guest, uh, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. Uh, she was confirmed as the Secretary of State in 1997 in the Clinton administration and was the first woman ever to hold that post, served throughout President Clinton's second term. Uh, as uh, Secretary Albright will discuss, and as many of you know, uh, her father was Josef Korbel, a member of the Czech diplomatic corps. Uh, we were uh, uh, joking as we uh, uh, were sitting in the library relaxing uh, before uh, the event that uh, Secretary Albright and I are two uh, of the few people uh, who refer to them as Czechoslo themselves as Czechoslovak Americans. So uh, having come of age with uh, Czechoslovak parents, we have that in common. I'm very fortunate uh, to count her uh, as a friend and as a mentor and as an advisor uh, and has helped me and uh, our embassy get off to a good start uh, with her advice and friendship. Uh, also uh, with us today, uh, we have Jerzy Schneider, uh, who uh, is, uh, of course, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, he's the former Program Director of the Prague Security Studies Institute, the formerly the MFA's political director, has uh, uh, too many times, uh, I think, uh, it's the only flaw in his otherwise uh, sound judgment that he has repeatedly served as the Director of the Policy Planning Department that brings a set of special headaches. I have a number of policy planners uh, who I count among my friends, and that is a very special job. And um, from 1995 until 1998 was the ambassador of the Czech Republic to Israel. Uh, and then finally, we're very pleased that Petr Gondolovich is also with us on the panel uh, very shortly to be uh, uh, departing as the uh, ambassador of the Czech Republic to the United States, my counterpart. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, get to know Petr and uh, trade ideas on our respective roles. Uh, he has served uh, in the Federal Assembly of the Czech Republic as Deputy Minister of the Environment uh, in the Czech Ministry of Foreign Affairs, including as Consul General to the Czech Mission in New York. Uh, as mayor of Usti Nad Labem. I have a beautiful picture in my dining room, a photograph that he gave us of the Holocaust Memorial uh, in Usti Nad Labem, uh, and a distinguished uh, member of the uh, Corps of Czech Public Servants. Um, just, to, uh, just to kick the conversation uh, off, um, I will remind, uh, uh, remind everyone uh, that um, the uh, Prague Agenda, um, uh, that as defined by President Obama in collaboration uh, with our Czech friends, uh, we have no better friends uh, anywhere in the world on, uh, on this issue or across the board, uh, seeks to reduce the number of nuclear weapons in the world, uh, seeks to strengthen the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty as a basis uh, for cooperation, uh, seeks to ensure that terrorists will never acquire nuclear weapons uh, and includes the, uh, also the uh, peaceful uh, uses of uh, civil nuclear energy. Um, the, um, uh, the format uh, for today is we will ask Secretary Albright to share some reflections on the Prague Agenda uh, to kick off our celebration. This is by no means uh, the only commemoration. We are uh, very pleased that the uh, uh, MFA is hosting a major conference next week uh, on the Prague Agenda, and uh, 
Uh, Yirji will tell you a little bit more about that. We have a distinguished, uh, distinguished guest from the United States who will be joining us for that as well. Uh, and I'll let Yirji talk about that when, uh, uh, when he uh, addresses you. So we thought we would, uh, we would have uh, Secretary Albright uh, favor us with some brief remarks. Uh, then uh, e each of us on the panel will uh, ask questions. I'll go to the back of the line since I've done so much talking already. Uh, we'll have a conversation up here and then about halfway through we'll open it uh, to all of you for questions. Uh, and with that, Secretary Albright. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ambassador Eisen, and, and I think you can all tell that I don't really sound the way I usually do, so I apologize for that. I am delighted that Ambassador Eisen is here. He is a very good friend and a very close friend of President Obama's, and I think it is a very important sign that President Obama sent one of his very closest friends to be America's representative here. Um, and I'm looking forward to welcoming Ambassador Gundelovich in Washington. My job in life is to send American ambassadors here and welcome Czech ambassadors in Washington. <laughs> <clears throat> and, I'm, and, I, and I like that. It's a great thing to do. And uh, Mr. Schneider, it's an honor to be with you again. <clears throat> well, let me just say, I think that the Prague Agenda is a truly important aspect of uh, President Obama and America's foreign policy. I was very pleased, obviously, when he decided to come to Prague in the first place and be a part of the discussions here, and that, in fact, this has become a hallmark in terms of the various important issues. I think that there is no question that President Obama sees the nuclear nonproliferation issue as one of the most important ones to deal with during his administration. Uh, what, <clears throat> to me, as an outsider, has been remarkable has been the consistency with which this policy has been followed out. It has been a step by step and has in fact been carried out whether we are dealing with North Korea in terms of getting United Nations resolutions passed or um, having also a nuclear summit, uh, which was very important to bring 47 countries together to talk about the nuclear agenda. And what I think is very interesting is the President put out a nuclear posture review and uh, we can talk about in more detail, or somebody else can, <coughs> um, in terms of uh, how it me how the nuclear posture fits in to our general national security strategy. Um, I also, um, the president has spent a lot of time with the International um, Atomic Energy Agency in order to try to figure out how to have a nuclear fuel bank. And then I have to say, we all put in an awful lot of work on the New START Treaty. Um, what was very interesting was the President assembled the former Secretaries of State and Defense. <clears throat> we all were trying to persuade our Senate that it was a very important treaty. It passed, and now we're on to the next steps. And I think those are the things we could talk about, um, in fact, of what we're looking to next. Let me just make one statement. I think some of you know I was asked by <clears throat> the administration to be um, the American expert on the, the group of experts for a new strategic concept for NATO. And uh, it is very clear as that concept <clears throat> was adopted that, that NATO will continue to be a nuclear umbrella. So with that, go on. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> OK. Yirji? Should I take it? Please. <laughs> Just relax for a moment. All right. Uh, 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 thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to, to, to be here with Secretary Albright uh, uh, um, uh, once again in Prague. Uh, I remember when we organized, uh, in my previous capacity, the conference about the NATO strategic concept uh, uh, one and a half year, one and a quarter year ago. Uh, so welcome. Uh, uh, Prague Agenda. Uh, uh, we're asking ourselves uh, 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 whom we uh, should be grateful that uh, actually we've got this. Uh, uh, free of charge uh, uh, agenda, which is called after Prague. Uh, and it seems that initially uh, that it's a bit unwelcome uh, uh, gift from the uh, US president uh, uh, that he delivered uh, uh, as it was uh, uh, indi uh, indicated before, uh, the most important speech uh, uh, or major international speech in Prague. Uh, 
uh, uh, how many capitals, other capitals, would be more grateful than Prague uh, and uh, would uh, be cheering him uh, for this uh, uh, nuclear uh, disarmament agenda. And so uh, we decided uh, uh, to show uh, our ownership of the Prague agenda <laughs> and uh, 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 to market and, uh, and to take it seriously and do some business. So uh, uh, a small advertising. Uh, in one week, next Tuesday, we are uh, going to organize a conference uh, called Prague Agenda, the way forward. If you're interested in, uh, in information about the conference, uh, uh, there are some leaflets of programs uh, uh, available um, and we uh, came to a conclusion that first of all uh, this is an ongoing effort and we Czechs uh, are sometimes skeptics and we tend to see obstacles hurdles and so why not to share this uh, these views and uh, discuss uh, 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 in a constructive way uh, what is ahead so the first part will be uh, stock taking uh, it's two years after the speech, one year after the signature of START, uh, where we are now. Uh, uh, as Secretary Albright said, uh, uh, the Nuclear Security Summit, uh, very important. So the strategic level. And then two elements which I think are important for, uh, for Czech Republic. The first is uh, uh, non-proliferation. Uh, we are a country to, uh, which is proudly having some assets in uh, NBC protection and uh, we are active in all levels of non-proliferation efforts. So why not to, uh, to take this agenda seriously? And uh, last but not least, uh, nuclear security. Uh, uh, wouldn't that be, uh, we didn't know about, uh, about Fukushima tragedy uh, when we start organizing that. But I think uh, it's going to be very, very serious debate about nuclear security and peaceful use of, uh, of nuclear energy. And this country also uh, has its own take on peaceful use of nuclear uh, uh, energy. Uh, Ambassador knows something about it. Uh, uh, I think Westinghouse was the first word he said when he came to Prague. Uh, uh, but it's not only that, it's more broader. Uh, uh, My mother says it was the second word I said in the cradle after I repeated the Czech lullabies that yes, I said yeah. Westinghouse. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the Czech take on it, and uh, we would love uh, Prague to remain one of the places where we will continue to debate uh, uh, the hurdles, the challenges on this road uh, to, uh, to a better world. And uh, uh, I think it's one of the connecting points uh, between Prague and Washington. So, thank you. Well, Peter? Um um, I think uh, Yuzi uh, said that uh, we Czechs are skeptics. I think that uh, it's not entirely true. Uh, I am uh, sure that uh, we can uh, appreciate uh, bold uh, uh, ideas and uh, uh, major goals uh, set uh, by uh, politicians. And, uh, uh, the Prague agenda and the world uh, without nuclear arms is certainly a bold goal. Uh, for us Czechs, as skeptics, uh, I would uh, rephrase uh, the uh, title as the world uh, without nuclear arms in wrong hands uh, for time being. I think that this is something which we uh, would really um, want to focus and as Yiri said, uh, there are um, things we can um, contribute. Um, as well as uh, in the area of, uh, um, of uh, uh, peace uh, use, peaceful use of uh, nuclear energy, uh, uh, again, uh, Fukushima has become a major world issue and uh, particularly here in Europe uh, it has uh, a, a huge aftermath. In Germany, the tide is uh, uh, seeming to uh, turn to the uh, non-nuclear uh, side and uh, I think that Europe will definitely face a uh, difficult debate on the future of nuclear energy. We Czechs have a pretty um, difficult uh, experience with our neighbors, uh, Austria. Um, we uh, have pretty much no 
other uh, difficult question between us uh, other than uh, nuclear energy and uh, uh, Temelin. Uh, and uh, I'm a little bit afraid uh, uh, what if um, the same thing uh, um, uh, becomes a problem with Germany and uh, more um, in the entire Europe. So I think that the debate of, um, on the future of uh, nuclear energy is very important and I think we should include it into the Prague agenda and uh, the future of this uh, discussion. And again, as it was said, uh, uh, Temelin um, and uh, Westinghouse, uh, um, it is your role to promote uh, Westinghouse. Uh, it uh, may be my role to, uh, uh, to be trying to explain uh, uh, the leaders of uh, Westinghouse that uh, uh, the bid uh, will be transparent and open and that uh, if they will submit uh, uh, a competitive bid, uh, uh, they certainly will have a, a very good chance uh, uh, to win. Thank you. Thank you, Petter. Um, so I, um, uh, I, I am uh, amused, I must say, by the, it does say something about uh, American idealism and uh, Czech skepticism that our title is A World Without Nuclear Arms and yours is A World Without Nuclear Arms in the Wrong Hands for the Time Being. <laughs> That, that summarizes it, uh, uh, that says it all. Let, let me start with that, uh, let me start with that, the tension between those, those two concepts and ask, uh, and now that you've rested your voice, uh, and we won't stand on formalities, we'll get I'll you more tea. tea, we'll get you more tea as needed. Um, uh, do you think, um, do you think, uh, Secretary Albright, that the bolder, uh, idealistic uh, vision uh, of uh, a world without nuclear arms is possible. And I'll just preface this by saying uh, that there are a few people, um, uh, both because of the Secretary's long tenure in negotiating matters with Congress and her intimate involvement in helping to get the START Treaty done, and we talked during that process about the headaches, and one day I was still in the White House, and I, uh, I was walking through the uh, waiting room, and there I saw uh, an extremely impressive collection, not only my friend Madeline, but an extremely impressive collection. It looked like the, the portraits at the State Department had come to life, because we had all of the previous um, uh, living secretaries of state were there, I think, start, to support yeah. START because they felt so strongly about it. So given your long experience and your recent success in helping get the START treaty passed, um, do you think, uh, what do you think of the possibility, the hope of the short form of a world without nuclear arms? You know, um, when I came here to welcome the Czech Republic into NATO, I gave a speech over at the and it was a happy, great speech. And at that stage, Prime Minister Klaus came up to me and said, only an American could give an optimistic speech like this. Uh, <clears throat> the truth is, I am an American. And I always ask myself, what part of me is Czech? Skepticism is not one of them. I am not a skeptic. Uh, I am definitely an optimistic American. Uh, but I am a realistic optimist. I think that the goal of a nuclear-free world is a very, very important goal and has to be kept up there. Uh, there's a very interesting discussion that goes on in the United States about this and how the step process works towards it. But I think it is important. Um, and I think that when President Obama made the statement, he meant it. But he also has set out, if one reads the posture review carefully, a very set step a set of steps that show the deliverables and who does what when. So I do believe in the optimistic aspect to this. Um, one of the things, I did write a book, um, which was a memo to the president-elect, and at the time I didn't know who the president was going to be. And I said that um, trying to get the nuclear nonproliferation question right was a number one goal, and the second was to make sure that the worst weapons didn't get into the worst hands so that we don't create more terrorists uh, by our actions. So 
but I do believe in the goal. I do. I think it's not easy to snap your fingers and decide that it's going to happen. And so this, the New START Treaty is a very important step. What I find interesting is, uh, and this is the piece of paper I was looking at, our national security advisor, Tom Donlan, in his first important speech, talked about nonproliferation and began to lay out some of the issues in terms of where we were looking for what steps could lead towards that.